Hello. Thank you for joining us for this presentation as we examine the information collected during the climate emergency community outreach interviews for Port Hope. This process allowed us to get a glimpse of the town and its residents and obtain their reflections concerning climate change. A climate emergency is a governance resolution that admits previous and current actions are insufficient to limit the impacts of climate change. This is just the first step for an emergency declaration is best followed by a climate action plan, a strategic document that lays the foundation for the methods and processes that must be implemented in the next few years to build resilience against the impacts of climate change. Smaller municipalities have unique challenges when designing plans to address climate change. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities states that municipal governments directly or indirectly control about half of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions, which would indicate an emissions reducing responsibility does rest on every municipality's shoulders. Fellow researcher Jin Chu Wong and I conducted 12 ethnographic interviews, trying to make sure the different domains like agriculture, small business, and activists are all represented and their voices heard. The first question asked participants for an introduction and a bit about the organization they were representing. In the interest of keeping things anonymous, we will skip that. In the next few questions, we asked about awareness of climate change and its local implications. We started off by asking what participants believed are the chief causes of climate change. All respondents were aware of climate change and not a single participant said it should not be a priority. Many attributed it to human activity and follow-up questions revealed a much more diverse set of answers, but most made a connection to greenhouse gas emissions and global warming. The next question was, how do you believe climate change is affecting or will affect Port Hope in the county of Northumberland? As you can see, water levels are a major cause of concern, especially since the flooding events are vivid memories for long-term residents. Impacts on the riverbank and the shoreline are also a major concern. Hotter, drier summers can be problematic since many houses do not have air conditioners. There is some disquietude that heat warnings might become the norm and that some activities will have to be curtailed. Example, water-based recreation, nature walks, and any field work. The question was, have you observed any adverse impacts of climate change locally? There were perceived weather and temperature deviations, water restrictions, and advisories were attributed to stresses on water resources because of reduced rainfall consistency. Some respondents said that there were observable differences in agricultural yields and growing days, an impact on human activity, and also professions that dependent on natural systems conveyed significant changes. For example, sowing times for agriculture, skiing season lengths, and outdoor activities for tourism. Some mentioned that the heat waves and dry summer phases, combined with the loss of the tree canopy, would exacerbate discomfort amongst those who did not have air conditioning or relied on cooling centers. As observed, views are heavily influenced by impacts on local environmental features and elements alike. Number one, the Kanaraska River and Lake Ontario with water levels and soil erosion weighing in heavily. Number two, unpredictable weather. Local storms, heavy winds, and unpredictable precipitation patterns are just some of the things that the participants were concerned about or have observed. Number three, the surrounding flora. Tree canopy protection and reforestation efforts heavily influence judgment about climate change and sustainability. What are mitigation and adaptation actions? Mitigation is the reduction of the use of fossil fuels, resulting in a decrease of greenhouse gas emissions. Adaptation can be thought of as changes to our processes, 
systems and surroundings to make us more resilient to the current and future impacts of climate change. Adaptation actions that build resilience into the community will resonate with the residents when critical concerns around these local elements are addressed as perception of safety due to adaptation is measured against the safeguarding of these elements. We can move on to the next set of questions that revolve around the importance of local action and municipal responsibility. The question was, do you believe it is important to address climate change at the local level? All participants were emphatic in their belief that a mix of public and private action would be needed for mitigation as well as adaptation, and that private sector actions would gain more validity when guided by municipal direction. Many respondents said that residents were willing to act themselves, but would benefit from any guidance and informational support. Publicity also usually came up, especially announcing wins and successes in the effort to fight against climate change and to take credit for work being undertaken under municipal mandate because the news shouldn't be all negative and doom and gloom. The next question was, do you believe local government has a responsibility to act on climate change in Port Hope? We let the participants speak, speak freely and we spotted commonalities in their answers. The residents want a municipal leader to rally behind and are willing to stand by hard decisions. The municipality is the governance institution with which an individual or business has the most personal interaction daily. The municipality should be the champion of climate change action, both in internal actions, as well as good practice proliferation across the country is what the respondents felt. Groups like Blue Dot, Port Hope for Future, Highway of Heroes, and their contributions were appreciated. Events like Awesome Fest were also appreciated. Respondents hope that the municipality can be more proactive rather than reactive, which they felt would help build confidence in the council's ability to fight climate change. They expect them to lead by example, corporate actions or recommendations of technologies and methods signifies a certain amount of administrative trust for these techniques. For example, installing solar panels on municipal facilities promotes confidence in solar photovoltaic tech and will spur inquiries and adoption. This word cloud indicates that the phrase publicized was mentioned frequently. People know the municipality has taken some steps against climate change but do not have a clear idea. Some are asking for social media connections, for general updates and to receive news. Some say that there should be more media integration with government organizations doing excellent work like the Ganaraska River Conservation Authority, whom the participants applauded. Concerns about the strategic plan not including a roadmap towards sustainability with clearly defined goals were raised. Combining these responses, we can conclude that the respondents want a municipality to be a proactive, collaborative leader that emphasizes public-private participation, is able to provide legitimacy to recommendations, and leads by example using corporate action to create an atmosphere of climate conscious of a climate-conscious community. The assigning of one or more community champions may help to proliferate ideas and behavioral changes amongst the community. Reach research shows that social networks play a large role in behavioral shifts. A proactive municipality must predict and adapt to risks, explore new methods and better processes, and always be striving for improvements. Being proactive is especially important for a retrospective evaluation of decisions and previous judgments. For example, the subdivision development caused a bit of consternation amongst the participants who said that maybe it needs to be looked at from a new lens. Another point, the respondents believe that the municipality can assign responsibilities to certain community groups. This provides them with a sense of participation and pride. 
The next question was about keeping up with climate change news, with most respondents revealing that they seek out news and information and try to do more research. Part partial searching indicated that they consume climate change related news and information presented in broadcasts, blogs, or news feeds, but rarely search for it themselves. The participants said that they would appreciate information with a local perspective that was easily absorbable. They asked for visualizations, updates, bulletins, and key points that would not demand too much of their time and would help convey vital information in an easily accessible format. Children were one of the main sources of information of a household, disseminating information learned in schools or online throughout their families. The question was, do you believe local government should make climate change action a priority above or equal to other issues? Here we compared some key priorities. We adopted a few from the strategic plan and included climate action in the mix. Infrastructure, sustainability, and climate action die for first place. Confirming the participants call for including climate action as a specific area of action and focus in the strategic plan. There were quite a few jurisdictional discussions about the others, but with climate change, there was no doubt that the local municipality is a big influencer and executor. This led us to probing what they expect from including climate change in the strategic plan. Number one, the municipality can exhibit current conditions of emissions in the municipality and the future vision of the council members with respect to climate action. Number two, they can emphasize clear, short, and long-term goals and objectives, both community and corporate. Internal emission reductions and external adaptive improvements can be discussed. Number three, it clarifies intention and conveys certain area of focus to accentuate specific activities that the municipality plans to pursue with respect to policy. Example, renewable energy systems on facilities, greening of their fleets and their potential impacts. We asked respondents what they believed potential mitigation actions the municipality can undertake. Here are some of them. Tree cover concerns extend into, extend into asking for regulations and stronger protections, which respondents feel are being ignored. Although this is an environmental issue, many try to avoid single-use plastics in their homes and businesses, and they want the municipality to push the progression of phase-outs of single-use plastics and similar hard decisions. Corporate actions against climate change would help to emphasize the municipality setting an example and taking the lead. There was some talk of promoting compact urban plans for more walkability with mixed use neighborhoods, but such considerations must overcome the aversion to increased density. We asked respondents what they believed potential adaptive actions the municipality can undertake. Quite a few suggestions involve tree planting programs for residents and businesses that want trees on properties and expanding tree planting programs to include backyards and schoolyards. A bolder approach with established timeframes for corporate and community action could be followed. Milestones and specific mention of climate change in the strategic plan would also help convey intention and aspiration. Some recommended to try and emulate Kuberg in the appointment of an environmental officer to engage with stakeholders and community partners. A few recommended promoting local living, local sourcing, and local traveling. Some suggested disincentivizing car usage with the provision of alternatives. Here's a summation of the information regarding actions that can be undertaken. Some respondents were keen on public transit expansion and cycling alternatives. Smaller municipalities have unique hurdles to address regarding investment into public transit. 
community sharing initiatives for products example tools mm -hmm. and electronics could help reduce consumerism conservation by inspection of insulation in homes efficiency of hvac systems and a push to adopt renewable energy could help with energy conservation tree planting expansion could be bolstered by the municip by municipal help with tree planting on properties with backyard food production guidance improving self sufficiency in a personal capacity waste reduction transportation habits and embracing natural elements were mentioned frequently as things that can be undertaken within homes some unique commercial actions suggested were making conscious decisions to promote environmentally safe products locally sourced some participants professed a willingness to pay slightly more for lower carbon footprint products businesses and the municipality can come together to replace single use plastics within a time frame and a directory of alternatives can help usher in that change since some businesses have done it they can be champions and guide others longer business hours in downtown will help people to get off work and do their essential shopping within these small stores or else they must visit big box stores because of early closing times this prevents people from buying local and forces residents to drive more this slide is just it summarizes the recommended community actions i mentioned um, the one unique point that's here some individuals said that waste drop off meant um, everyone must drive singularly to the drop off point which leads to emissions the final slide here are some key takeaways from this project proactive solutions are needed without waiting for impacts to affect the community participants felt comprehensive responses are warranted and have higher expectations as news becomes more dire and effects become more noticeable institutions must begin to integrate measures into their normal values to enhance resilience the community should get a sense of satisfaction that the municipality is prioritizing climate action to an acceptable degree we suspect surveys and workshops will strengthen this line of thought further surveys can be used to promote collaborative decision making with respect to climate action so we've come to the end of our presentation i know it was a little information and data heavy i do apologize for that thank you for your time